to the channel, Adam from RC Action Australia. Big thanks to everyone who has kindly subscribed and liked and chucks lots of comments down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can also catch me on Facebook and Instagram where I also have a Facebook group as well. So get on there and support those as well, guys. My last video, if you are a subscriber and do watch my channel, you would have noticed the Tamiya Nova Fox. That came out beautifully. I can't wait to get a run video for you for that one. So that'll be coming up soon on the channel as well. But back to today's video, the Tamiya Egress 58583 is the kit number. 2013 reissue this one. So as you can see, it looks absolutely beautiful. The box art's just beautiful. And what can I tell you, but the actual kit itself is absolutely spectacular. We have got the body lined out, um, laid out, sorry, nicely down the center. We've got the wheels and tires sort of there, and it really looks like it's ready to go as soon as you open the box. We've got lots of carbon, we've got high caps, lots of alloy parts, so it just screams quality, this kit. And this is something that, to me, it really needs to concentrate on. You know, I've bought a lot of Kyosho kits lately, you open the box and it just screams quality. But unfortunately, Tamiya don't really do a lot of kits like this and you pretty much open a box and it's just a jungle of plastic bags. So Tamiya, if you are watching, put a little bit more effort in because these kits are very, very special. Now, as you can see, there are a few parts missing from the blister packs over here, but don't stress, um, the, the owner that sent it to me because this is not my car, I'm building it on the channel for uh, one of my subscribers and he's asked me to do a few little special touches. So um, yeah, I'm going to build it on the channel and then I'll post it back to him. And so as I mentioned, there's a few things missing from the packs there, but I have gone through everything is actually was in the box and the owner has sent me a few electronics and a motor and whatnot to build the kit with. So we'll be building it with the Superstock BZ motor. That's a beautiful motor, that one. Um, what's That's item 53930. It's a 23 turn motor. Um, and I think it's revs to like 26,300 or 26,500 RPM. I run one of these in some of my other cars and they perform very, very well considering that they're a 23 turn motor. So definitely, um, if you want to keep your car sort of Tamiya or want to put a nice uh, special looking motor in a Tamiya kit, I can recommend that one out there. Uh, he's given me a, um, some sort of a digital servo, but you'll see that in the build video. Now, he picked it up extremely cheap, I reckon for probably a quarter of what you'd pay for one at the moment. Um, the previous owner made a few mistakes in building the first couple of steps, so that's why there's some of the packs are open, but um, I've checked everything out. I've managed to rectify those mistakes, um, hence why I've um, started to build step one to step two, I think this is, um, just because the previous owner had built things upside down somehow. So um, yeah, let's crack on with the build video and hopefully you enjoy the egress and yeah. We're gonna go something a little bit different on the paint, so stick around and watch how it all comes together. I'm super excited to build this one on the channel, and um, unfortunately, I'll have to send it back to the subscriber. So yeah, I'll let you know throughout the video what I think of the kit, and at the end, I'll give you a full review and wrap up of the egress. So steps one through to five is assembling the motor and rear gearbox assembly and attaching it to the chassis. So we move on to step seven now. We assemble the front and rear uh, diff assemblies. They're ball bearing assemblies and they go together quite nicely, just got to watch the instructions. So 
now we move on to step 11 where you get to configure the center diff and install the drive shaft. After that, we start to assemble the rear suspension assembly. Everything goes together quite nicely and as, as you can see, the car starts to come together. Flying right along there guys, we get into step 18 and 19. Universal joints, front and rear are a nice touch on the egress kit. we get on to step 24 there we start to assemble these beautiful front hubs you can see the gold alloy pieces the universal joints look absolutely spectacular the chassis is really starting to take shape now and it's starting to look like an RC car Once we attach all the damper stays that you just saw there, we move on to the steering. Now this car has adjustable links and obviously has that carbon steering upgrade that you can buy for your Avanti I believe. Another feature on the egress of standard is the high cap damper set. So hopefully you enjoyed the little montage of the build come together there. Now this uh, build was sort of jammed in between my working week. So over about three nights, I just spent uh, about an hour each night building the car. The car itself went together quite easily. It wasn't a very difficult car to build. Probably the diffs um, and then deciding which way to go with the lock diff or the torque splitter. So I went with the torque splitter diff I've got no idea what difference that makes to the car. The manual itself doesn't really even tell you either. So I guess the person that I've built this for, they'll have to um, you know, see how they like driving it and you do get the parts included to change it. So that's something that the uh, when I send it back to the owner, they'll work out, I guess. So as you can see, we've got the super stock VZ motor in there. We've got a low profile uh, servo in there as well we've got all those carbon goodies we've got the high caps and obviously i put a trf sticker on the bottom there now the reason why i've sort of uh, put that sticker on the bottom is is because when we get over to painting um i did want to show off that carbon um bottom of the car as well now i did a very similar thing on my uh top force evo build I left the, um, as I said, that's a beautiful car. It's a replica car, um, but I did buy the upgraded uh, carbon fibre chassis, and as you can see, I left the bottom of that um, clear so you could see um, the carbon chassis and show that off as a bit of a showpiece. Now, the owner of this car um, has given me a little bit of free reign to do sort of what I wanted with the chassis. So I've gone ahead and um, uh, done cut out the under tray and as you can see there I have painted the edges of it um, black and left the bottom section of it clear. Now when that goes onto the car the black sections pretty much outline the chassis um, so that you see only the carbon um, 
lower deck and you don't see any of the gaps around the edges of it. So I'll put a picture of what that looks like up here for you guys to have a look at because I think it looks all pretty cool and obviously having that TRF sticker there as well shows through the clear section um, that I've left open. Now we get on to paint. Now the car itself, like I said, it wasn't very difficult to build um, but you know coming off the back of my last build, the Nova Fox, obviously it was a step up in um, difficulty. So, you know, would I recommend it to a, a beginner to the hobby? Probably not. Um, get yourself a few other kits and just get used to the Tamiya, um, you know, manuals and whatnot. But then again, it was very step by step. I did find that it jumped um, between parts bags a lot. Now, the manual will say, you know, parts bag A, but I found myself having to open a lot of other parts bag just to find screws. So, um, yeah, a little bit... Uh, you know, advanced in that, that, you know, you, you kind of had to go looking for parts in other bags. But anyway, we got it done in the end and it was no big drama. So the owner didn't want the car to be painted box art, but he did still want a silver colour. So we managed to track down a, a PS63, which is um, bright gunmetal. So as you can see there, it's um, you know it's it's basically a, it's a gunmetal grey colour, but it's a little bit brighter. Now I couldn't find this in stock anywhere in um, any of my local hobby shops, but I did find a friend of mine who had some, so he's kindly sent that to me. And I do believe that was a newer colour that was released on the CCO2 Mercedes G500. Um, so I'm not quite sure what supply is like with that paint, but nobody seems to have it. So I was managed to track that down. So we'll go outside now, we'll lay a few um, coats of this down. Now I did find out when you do spray the metallic colours, do a lot of really, really light um, spray, you know, a lot of light passes I guess. And let it build up a little bit and then you can, um, you know, just do it that way. Don't put too much on at the same time, otherwise you can get a lot of running in the metallic. So that's a tip out there. And then I'm going to back it with some PS5 black. So the power of editing, let's go outside, let's paint the car and I'll come back to you um, with what it looks like. And we'll also throw the decals on and I'll give you a full rundown of what it was like to paint and apply the decals. Okay, so just like that, we have painted the car. Now, as we can see, the color went on um, beautifully. I've already put the decals on as well, just to expedite things. Now, um, as I said, not sure how that's coming across on camera, but it's a beautiful looking color. Um, and yeah, turned out absolutely spectacular. It's a little bit lighter than the um, normal gunmetal gray that I would used on my Evo build there. Um, so I was expecting it to be a little bit lighter, to be honest, um, but I'm glad that it, it was just a bit more of a gunmetal colour. Now, another little touch that I like to do is on the inside of the bodies there, on the bottom of your decal sheets, you always get like, you know, the, the car, the year number and the part number. So I always like to add that um, inside the body. Just um, you know, just from a collection point of view, and I guess if you, if the owner of this ever does want to move it on, um, it just proves that it's an original body with original decals. Now, the decals, there's very, very few decals. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, five decals on either side of the car. So, very, very basic car um, in relation to the body and the decals. The body itself is very, very um, flimsy on the front end here, so just be careful cutting that out, and um, obviously when you insert it into the car. 
it, you've got to sort of manipulate it a bit to get it into the car. So be careful with that. But other than that, um, yeah, single color. You get uh, you don't even have to mask the windows because you get the black stickers just to put straight on. Now, when we come to the wing, the wing is a lot thicker polycarbonate, and thank gosh for that because the body is quite flimsy. So definitely, uh, the polycarbonate on the wing is a lot thicker. Now, a nice touch on this also was that um, the end plates for the wing are separate and they're held on by some screws and some nuts there. So definitely brings the quality of the kit up a little bit more versus some kits where it's double-sided taped on or um, the wing is just one complete unit. So let's um, take some time to, you know, have a look at that. I'll pop some pictures of, you know, the painting process and whatnot around. Um, let's get the whole car together now. I'll show you that sort of lower deck on the car and show you how that all comes together. And I'll put the body on and I'll show you some pictures of that and we'll wrap it up. So unfortunately, the owner didn't supply me with a receiver and a speed control for this. So I'm not really able to take it for a drive. Um, but, you know, he didn't really want anyone to drive it, to be honest. So I'm not quite sure what his plans are, whether it's going to be a display piece or whatnot. Now, I did hook up some electronics, obviously, just to centre the um, servo and obviously make sure the gear mesh was correct for the gearbox and whatnot. But as far as taking it for a run, um, I'll, I'll kind of keep it as it is um, and not sort of uh, take it for a run just because the owner didn't really want it. Um, he wanted to be the first person to run it, so which I understand. It's a nice kit. Another little tip that I can give you before we wrap it up and put the body on is the owner did supply me with a, a normal servo. Um, the normal servo hung out the side of the um, lower deck there. So I had this um, low profile servo that just arrived um, and I put it in so he's going to fix me up for that. And I actually think that the car deserves a smaller sort of low profile servo anyway versus just a big ugly servo. If you don't have a low profile servo, it is okay because the, um, the lower deck actually sits out further than, um, than the actual chassis deck. So there is actually room for a larger servo to sit in there. So you don't have to upgrade to a low profile. Okay, so here is the car. It's all put together there. I think it looks absolutely spectacular. Hopefully that's coming across nicely on camera as well because it looks very, 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 very nice. Unfortunately, I don't get to hang it on the wall behind me and keep it. it does have to go back to the owner. Now, um, I've sort of been tempted to try and buy it off him, but um, he has been looking for one of these for a very long time. And yeah, he sent it to me because he does get very, very busy um, and whatnot. He's got a lot of cars that he builds himself, and he was just really, really wanting um, more or less just for me to feature it on the channel and just for, to get it built quicker than when he would be able to. So yeah, fantastic. Look at that, nice big wing. Now, if we flip it over, I'll show you what I did with that underneath section. So as you can see, the edges are painted black right around the back there, and then I've left that center section um, carbon, and we've got a bit of a TRF uh, sticker going on there. So I reckon that looks quite nice. Um, very easy to do. All you need to do is just uh, put the bottom plate on, trace around where the chassis deck is, um, and then mask it up, um, spray the section that you don't have masked. Um, so yeah, little touches like that can actually build, bring a car um, very, very sort of nicely up in the quality. Now, yeah, absolutely spectacular. I'm a bit lost for words with this one because it is a beautiful looking car and it's probably one of the best to me kits that I've ever built. Um, I am looking forward to the VQS though because this car was very, very reminiscent of building my Vanquish. Now, just putting this together, the Egress feels like a, a you know, the um, top of the range carbon Vanquish, um, whereas the Vanquish is sort of like a little bit plasticky. So anyone out there that um, wants something similar, can't get their hands on an Egress for decent money, 
you definitely look out for a Vanquish or the new um, re-release VQS. So I'll wrap it up there today. Thanks for watching. As always, hit like and subscribe. Your support is very much appreciated. I'll see you on the next video. So yeah, don't forget to head over and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Bye.